What you doing, buddy? Come here, buddy. Give me, give me, you laying down on my feet. Give me a hug. Come here. Give me a hug. What are you doing, boy? Oh, Lord, I've been gone for days. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm. Gorgeous day out here. A little bit chilly. We're going to go up. We got some new additions to the farm. We got some new babies. I know we've got one female. I don't know if we have a male or another female. I uh, been out of town. Uh, my my family's been watching after the farm while I was gone. I went to the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky, the place where people love to steal your catalytic converter. What a great place! Um, <laughs> the entertainment and stuff at Louisville is super awesome. the The show has always been super awesome. But I'm going to tell you, the, uh, uh, the, I don't feel safe there. I just don't feel safe in Louisville. I, I don't. It's a, um, I don't think that they have enough police presence. I, I just simply don't think that they do. And that's all it is to it. I think there's a lot of scum in cities that, that thrive on tourists that come and they can rob them and steal from them. That's pretty sad. But it's the way it is. I've got the uh, Warlock dump truck over here running. I just moved it um, from where I had it parked in front of the house. And I like to let this truck run a little bit so the battery doesn't die. So she's good to go. Shut that dude off and uh, come back here in a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and walk up. Watch, buddy. Buddy can't go with us. Kennel. Kennel. Go kennel. <laughs> he can't go with us because the cows do not like the dog. That's just the way it is <laughs> uh dennis says looking good thanks buddy thanks man took a shower today i think we need a shower once a week whether we're dirty or not what do you think <laughs> uh just so i got in yesterday evening from the farm show great show got cool videos coming out over on the main youtube channel if you're joining me and you're on facebook looks like a lot of uh a lot of Facebook comments, but I'm not getting a lot of YouTube, or excuse me, YouTube comments, but not getting a lot of Facebook. Uh, does he miss Lexi? No, not at all. He gets to come out and play a whole lot more. I don't have to worry about a dangerous dog that's going to bite somebody or hurt somebody or hurt a, a cat or chase a calf or whatever. So, yeah, he's not at all concerned. So, are you gaining weight? Lynn, um, I'm lifting weights. So I'm a bigger dude. Um, <laughs> so just went to the gym, just got out of the gym. So yeah, I wouldn't say I'm gaining weight like fat, but I'm gaining weight like I'm a big fowler. Still wearing the 32 waist pants, so it's all good. Um, Brady Jones, hello, good to see you. Terry is in the room, looks like a car lot there. <laughs> well, you know, as a younger man, I enjoyed automobiles and I wanted things and I worked hard and I have those things that I want. So it's good. I'm looking for the, the, the completion of the collection. Model A Ford, definitely a, a must. 57 Chevy Bel Air in black, black on black with the black and gray interior. And those are getting cheaper by the minute. And another Buick Grand National, my uh, older Buick Grand National that I had, and I grew up with the Buicks. Um, Grandpa always had a Buick from Roadmasters back in the 50s all the way through to um, the Park Avenue in the, uh, in the 80s until he switched over to Jeep uh, and he started uh, buying, uh, what was it, the Grand Cherokee. So, TYM. T1104 up here. Probably wouldn't hurt me to start that thing. Looks like Ty Ann's in the house. Good to see you, Ty. Uh, Ray, George, Dante. Do a farm tour 2024. I will when it gets prettier. Look at this. It's nasty out here. Man, this place is going to green up like nobody's business in a few weeks. Probably in about a month or so. So, uh, can you talk about what happened in Louisville, Kentucky? Tom, this was uh, a couple years back. We're going to walk and talk a little bit. I'm going to get out of breath. Okay, there's a hill. Okay, that's a hill. I'm going to be out of breath. Don't pick on me. 
<laughs> or pick on me if you want to. It's all good. I'm not worried about it. Sticks and stones can break my bones, right? I think it's something a whole lot of our uh, youth of today needs to learn. Sticks and stones can break our bones, but words ain't never going to hurt me. You can say whatever you want to say. Just makes you look like a jerk if you're a jerk. <laughs> makes you look like a nice person if you're a nice person. Uh, so, got a little skunk sign. Let me show you this. I'll show you this real quick. This is kind of cool. Skunks have been after grubs up here. Let's give you some. We all got to learn something, right? Let's learn something together. Okay, so skunks and or possums will do this right here. So that, that's probably a, where a skunk dug down to find a grub, okay? Skunks are good animals to have around even though they stink. Uh, let's show you some more of that. Grubs are important. They're uh, helping to till the soil for us, which, which really tells me something about the land. Look right here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, spots where a skunk has dug down to, uh, to uh, get the grubs. So that means that our soil is less compacted. That's awesome. Um, nasty the weather in Orlando. Yeah, we're, my neighbor is supposed to have a little NASCAR party today. I think we're going to just have a regular party instead of a NASCAR party. <laughs> I'm going to turn the camera back around so you guys can see me. Uh, nice guy's name is John. Great, great dude. He's out golfing right now as I'm out moving cows. You make sacrifices, don't you? <laughs> Never seen a skunk here. You've seen a skunk on the channel. If you look back a few years back, I had a skunk run up under my mobile home <laughs> and we got under there live and got him out. That was kind of fun. NASCAR delayed due to the rain. Yep. Yeah, so we're just going to get together and cook out a little bit. I bought 40 pounds of chicken wings the other day. I have a bit of a food hoarding problem. Shame on me. <laughs> uh, but I'll eat it. I probably eat, I don't know, two pounds of meat a day, something like that. One and a half to two pounds of meat per day, along with salads and stuff too. So, Okay, we're going to pop over the hill and show you guys the cows. I'll turn the camera back around. And uh, they're all waiting patiently for me. I hope. There we go. A little breezy out today. Temperature's about, about 54, 52. How many meat birds we get this spring? I'm going to do 35 in the spring and 35 in the fall. And that's my plan. All the hatcheries, guys, if you're ordering meat birds you better get on it you better order them quick all the hatcheries are, are running out of beef so we got a baby here little baby and i don't know if it's a boy or a girl but i'm looking from this distance i think it's a girl and the cows still have hay so we're not moving them we're not going to move them till later so uh i can see right here let's go out and we'll go take a look at that so the cows are going to move into this paddock right here, and I've already got my hay bales all set out, but uh, they still have hay. So let's go take a look. Want to want to hear them sing to me? Woo! Morning, girls. Woo! Yep, them was full cows. Or <laughs> full cows ain't mooing. Hungry cows will be mooing. Step on over here. Let's see what we got going. Let's go see, visit the new babies. Cattle, chickens, etc. Carol and drama. Carol, <laughs> what's your, what is your chest freezer setup? Uh, I've got three chest freezers right now. Probably going to upgrade and get five eventually. Um, guys that are waiting on beef. Look at this. this what's this guy got going on? What's you got going, bud? You got something in your throat? He's looking kind of raggedy. And he's standing there kind of funny. And he's chewing kind of funny. Let's take a look at him. Looks like he's been laying down right there, rolling around a little bit. You all right, buddy? Let's take a little peek at 310 here. You okay? You look like you're... You look constipated, uh, brother. 
Is he constipated? Is that what it is? <laughs> he doesn't, he's not acting quite right. You all right, buddy? <laughs> Let's hope he's not choking. No doubt. No, mouth to mouth, live mouth to mouth with the cow would be kind of rough, wouldn't it? I think he's fine. You're a good boy. There you go. <laughs> We make things up in our head for something to be wrong. I guess people do that with their kids too. So this is the latest and greatest new baby. And I don't know who mom is. I have not been up here yet. This is my friend, my little buddy. And uh, all these guys are in a, the middle of a broom straw bale. That's broom straw, huh? It's, it's not good, is it guys? We're gonna give you another hour or so on that broom straw. And what we got here is a little boy. A little baby boy. There you go. And mama is 303 evidently, which is another small cow. Um, first time mama. I do believe that's mom. Are you mom? <laughs> Cute little baby. And this is my buddy. Come on over here, buddy. You haven't got to see me in a couple days and I know you got your hair is all messed up. Let's get it all out of there. Let's get all that out of there. There you go, little buddy. I know. <laughs> that's a good boy. I guess that's mom. Either that's mom or 205 is mom. Let's see. Maybe 205 is mama. Okay, so we can see this calf has birthed recently. Hey, hey mama. So this is mom. <laughs> mom has no number. She rubbed it off. I think her number is 213. I saw her, uh, her number plate had been rubbed off. <laughs> he's probably figuring the earring means he's for dinner. That's funny. Thank you, Plague of Badgers. Don't advertise it too much, brother. I'm still waiting on approval to get, uh, to get things uh, sent out to start shipping beef out i'm still waiting on approval so that i don't get the farm shut down which seems kind of silly but guys the government's controlling everything that we do everything that we do the uh, the beef that comes off the farm is all usda inspected but gosh i just want to make sure that i don't get a knock at my door you guys have seen the trend nowadays of shutting small farms down so yep that's kind of the trend. That's my buddy again. He's coming back over for some more rubbing. <laughs> Canine Striker says something about horses. Hmm. Go Donnie. You know, I don't think these babies are Donnie's babies. I think it's from the big bull. I think it was from Wooly Bully, to be honest with you. These are younger calves that have just come into, into heat. Either, either that or it was even, even my old sneaky buddy uh the last bull that we had so let's let's take a look at uh, mama 211 we showed mama last week hey mom how are you and this is the new baby from for 211 that's a little heifer little girl and that's mom and mom 211 has turned out to be absolutely awesome she has been a great mother cannot complain she has been super good yep Here's number five. Hey, Freedom, how are you? How are you? Freedom must be in heat. Is Freedom in heat? How you doing, girl? Freedom doesn't let me touch her. She's maybe let her touch her one time. And this little fella here, he loves some Josh, don't you? Don't you, buddy? It's a little intimidating walking out into a pasture with a thousand pound animal. Yep, nice looking herd, Josh. Glad to not get the snow. We got snow on the way back from uh, Louisville yesterday. It was snowing the whole way back, pretty much. Number two hundred one. She's suspect for uh, for popping out a baby. Look how look how fat she is. So our younger cows are having babies. Our first round of babies. Two hundred one. Calf over here. Food over here. Typically, let's take a look at her. Took us at her butt. <laughs> her udders are starting to show just a little bit. And is she swollen in the back end? She is swollen. And is there some jelly 
coming out of there. Yes, there is. This will be our next cow to calf. She'll probably calf tonight. You're going to calf tonight, you good girl. You're pretty girl. Yeah, she's she's going to calf very, very soon. So, awesome. Yep, Louisville Farm Machinery Show. Yep, National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky. Typically try to go every year. We possibly can. Look at the milk on this cow's face. <laughs> um, so this is one of our older mamas. This is Blue Eyes. I call her Blue Eyes because she looks like she has blue eyes. How you doing, Blue Eyes? I think she has a little Brahma in her. And she is a big girl. Look at her, look at her udders. She's a... She's still weeks from calving, and she's a big lady. 38 is a big cow, too. And we're probably a few weeks from calving. We're, uh, we've got udders, but they're not very plump. Um, what we're looking at in the rear end there on the cow is just to see a little bit of swelling. Typically, that's a sign that we've got babies on the way. Hey, guys. Good morning. 207, I would anticipate to have a calf this year. This will be her first year of calving. 207 means she's the seventh cow born in uh, the year 2022. We can look at her rear end under her tail. I can see she's a little bit swollen there. We'll check her udders out. We're in her flight zone right now, which is where the cow does not like you to be. Um, so I don't see a whole lot of udders, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? It's calving season, guys. We're coming into full swing. These cows are about to eat me out of house and home. I'm going to tell you that right now. We're probably going to end up taking just a few. We don't want to say it real loud, but we might take a few to the market. Two babies so far. Any plans for pigs? Yes. Plans for pigs in the future here. Just got to get this mastered first, okay? And I want to do hogs, but I don't want to do hogs for everyone else. I want to do hogs for me and my family, and uh, meaning my dad and stepdad and mom and and uh, stepmom and myself neighbors but i'm not going to do uh, a commercial pork i say i'm not going to and <laughs> watch it happen 13.5s big girl looking good so we've got to try out the new handling equipment it's sitting over there the air equip handling equipment uh, it's doing good hay supply is a little bit low steve is there a difference in Angus and Longhorns taste-wise? I have no earthly idea. I think I don't want Ang I don't want Longhorns on on the farm. Really, it's not really my thing. It's more of a a Western kind of thing. Uh, these cows birth so good, so easy. That's that's the main thing is that we uh, we have cows that are healthy and that birth really well. So I'm walking up on this cow. This is Blue Eyes again. She's got a little bit of eye crust. Right there on her eyes, just just checking everybody out. This is Butthead right here. You guys haven't, everybody's met Butthead, right? That's Butthead because she likes to butt. You pooping, girl? You doing a little fertilizing? I think you are. I think you got something in your in your hair there. <laughs> Baby back ribs and chicken wings. I'll be coming over, says Terry. Short bus mooner says hogs for methane. Yeah, we're going to film the next Mad Max movie here, right? <laughs> I love it, buddy. I love it. Most people wouldn't get that joke. <laughs> so I've done some overseeding with the four-wheeler, the ATV. And this is Susie. Hey, Susie Sue. How you doing, girl? How you doing, Susie? Um, I did some overseeding on, on each section of pasture right here, but it's a little bit early to be overseeding, so. Yeah. Awesome. Like I said, guys, you can see there we're gonna I'm gonna come back right at dark to move these cows off this pasture. They weren't put in here till about five o'clock yesterday evening. So they haven't had quite enough time. You can see there's still good hay here, and there's still a big pile of hay right there, so we can't waste it. People ask about Tammy. This is Tammy. Hey Tammy. Tammy the donkey. She's pretty skittish. She's not really a pet. She's here for protection. From the coyotes so she's predator protection on the farm let's talk about health problems and medications none of these cows have received any kind of medications any kind of vaccines there have been no dewormers in these cows all these cows get all of these cows all they're getting 
is grass. Grass and rotation, grass and rotation. Makes sense, don't it? In a few weeks after the cows are off this section of pasture, we're gonna come in with the wingfield drag harrow and we're gonna drag all the manure pads that you see. This guy's so curious. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? What you doing, buddy? Give me a big old lick. Just give me a big old lick. I know you want to. You're tasting me now. Give me a big lick. He just wants to be loved on. Oh, don't be frustrated. <laughs> uh, he's like, Dad, I want to move. Tammy's a legend, says Greg. Denise says, welcome to the Stony Ridge Farm. We got about 223 of you in here, about 75 likes. Hit that like button, guys. Hey, hey. <laughs> so we've had no pneumonia this year. We've had no health problems this year. We've had no foot hoof problems. We've had just absolutely been super blessed with the way that we're raising our animals here on the farm. It's just been a big time blessing. Absolutely, it has been great. Uh, for those of you who caught some of the live streams about my personal life, my personal life is fine. Everything's good to go there. I'm uh, moving on, moving along. I'm dating. It's, it's very nice, very pleasant. Found a really wonderful lady that I've uh, been spending some time with. So that's nice. I think, I think maybe she's a little nervous about the cows, but uh, <laughs> just the way of the world. She's not really a, a farm girl, but I think maybe she could be a farm girl at some point. She's a sweetheart though. This is Cindy. Cindy on her face, you can see, she's got some little bear spots on her face right here. Hey, Cindy girl, I don't want to get too close to you and bother you, but I want to teach people, okay? So Cindy's been scratching. You can see those little bear spots right there. This time of year with cattle, it's normal for them to start getting a little bare spot here and a little bare spot there, sometimes on their belly. And what that is sometimes is uh, mites. Mites get in the hay, like grass mites get in the hay, and they, they won't transfer over to humans. And once it warms up a little bit, they'll, they'll be totally gone. So I really, really stressed and worried about this when I first got my cows because the first year we bought some really crappy hay, some hay that was just garbage. And uh, it came off of a, a local farm. I say garbage, it worked, it did, it did its job, but it was full of grass mites. And uh, those grass mites had really irritated the cows. You can see on her face right there, she's got just a few little bare spots where she's been scratching. That's, that's a normal thing this time of year. There's no use in getting a bunch of sprays and a bunch of garbage and coating our animals with poisons when it's all going to go away in about a month. Bailey Davis says, Farmer wants a wife. You need to watch. Bailey, Farmer wants a wife contacted me about a year ago, about a year, maybe a year and a half ago. Went through the interview process, took a bunch of pictures, went through several interviews. If they go into season two, I don't know what'll happen. I know it's a show. They contacted me. Fox contacted me about that. So, uh, I don't know how they found me, <laughs> but I don't, and maybe I wasn't pretty enough for the show. <laughs> but Farmer Wants a Wife did reach out to me at some point. I was not supposed to talk about it, but they didn't pick me, so now I can talk about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was pretty flattering. I don't know. TV's, TV is interesting. I don't think, I don't see myself as a TV star. I just see myself as a cow boy cowboy cowboy <laughs> hey 40 this is perfect this is what we want all of our cows to look like all winter long guys and we are into just about to the end of winter right here and the condition of our animals has really been great when that grass starts to pop this year it's gonna be awesome so how many fur babies greg we got two two little babies and it looks like we'll probably have another one by tomorrow Let's go see what old Donnie's up to. We don't have a baby by Donnie yet that I can tell. There's no brown babies. I would say Donnie came in about this time last year, maybe March of last year. So it's going to take a little while for Donnie to, to be an influencer here on the, uh, <laughs> on the ranch. Right, buddy? 
Look at him. He's getting more masculine, more muscly. He's a pretty cool, pretty cool bull. How could you leave the farm that long anyway, says Michael. I just had my family come and stay and watch after everything for, it was only three days. Can't be a prisoner to your property. Uh, that's why I'm kind of looking to have someone, a local young person to come help me for about 10 hours a week. Maybe a college student, something like that. Not an intern. I don't want an intern. The word intern on a farm, to me, uh, you need to be paid to get your farm education also. The word intern, I've got some friends that do interns and they don't pay but like a hundred bucks a month. They give them all the food they want and everything like that, place to live, and they don't pay them very much. I just don't think that that's fair. I wouldn't want to do that and I wouldn't want to put anybody else through that. So I'm too normal for TV. I don't know how normal I am. <laughs> uh, Ziggy says, I'm saving for my land. It's been about three years now and it sucks. Well, if you got that attitude, brother. You might want to lose that attitude uh, first. Because <laughs> uh, it's all going to suck. Okay, I'm telling you, you're going to be working your butt off. You're not going to be making no money. You're going to be trying to buy land. You think buying the land is the expensive part. It's not. That's the cheap part. That's the cheap part. So if you think it sucks now, you better just quit. Got to be positive, man. Remain positive. Okay, do that. Tell me you'll do it. Be positive. Nothing sucks unless you decide it sucks, right? Nothing does. Guys, I just went through a divorce and guess what? It didn't suck. Okay, <laughs> it didn't. Life is, life is way too short to think that everything sucks. It may be his calf since South Pole are derived. Yeah, it could be black. It still could be one of his calves. Absolutely. F. Hoover says the right time to buy land is about the right time to buy a tree. I say wait till interest rates go down, to be honest with you. Or find somebody that will owner finance a piece of land for you. This is not the time to buy. We're going to have, in my humble opinion, prices are going to come on back down to something reasonable. This is absolutely ridiculous with real estate and, and income in this country. I just, it's just ridiculous. What, what I paid for the farmland here is more, is less expensive than most people are paying for a three bedroom house on a 16th of an acre. So it's not cool. This is a, this is kind of a, a crazy time. Let's see if we can get close to the baby. Hey, cutie boy. This is our newest baby, and you have not met Dad yet. Hey. My mom is curious. Let's see if baby comes over here. Come on, baby. <laughs> Sometimes we got to be a little, go a little easy. 315, going to come over and hang out. If you ever get an opportunity in your life to get a chair and just go out and sit in the cow pasture, make sure that the cows are, are good and the farmer's cool with that. But if you ever get an opportunity to just go sit in the cow pasture for a little bit, these guys are super curious. They will be all over me rubbing and licking and checking me out if I came out here and sat in the pasture. Cripple Creek Farms. Good people. Saw them at the farm show. <laughs> hunting the baby a first year heifer like this one right here has a bit of a smaller milk sack just so you guys know and again i'm going to anticipate that this young lady right here number 201 will be our next baby that's my anticipation because babies still need an ear tag steve yep well, when i run the cows through the chute baby gets an ear tag okay if I can't catch him within the first day or so, it's really hard for me as one guy to catch a, a calf like that and put an ear tag in it. It's hard for me to hold it and, and do all that stuff. So we've got two calves that need to be tagged. I know which one's which. We got It'll be 401 and 402. Dave, hey, are we still live? Yeah, man. Yes, sir. Sure is. We sure is. <laughs> what kind of seed are you spreading? So I've got a, I'm trying some different mixes this year. I'm actually going to do some uh, some tillage radish in here. 
Um, and I'm doing some turnips a little bit later on in the year in uh, fescue, Kentucky 32 fescue, K32 fescue. The grass that you're seeing right here, this is what we'd call wire grass. Uh, it's not very nutrient dense, it's not very good, and it's very invasive. Below that wire grass, what we're seeing here is fescue, good fescue grass. So trying to push out, and the fescue will, will push out this wire grass eventually when the nutrient gets right in the soil, trying to push it out. Guys, look at this. How long have you been watching the channel? Just look at this. Five years, four or five years since, I think it's been four years since the first fence post was driven here by Farm Fence Solutions here on the farm. Started out with two cows, bought a farmer out, had 16, and now we're here at 51 cows, 51 animals. Pretty awesome. Yep. Dave, yeah, the gravel turned out great around the shop. I need to get a rake and get out there. Tomorrow's day is uh, going to be moving cows, moving hay bales, and uh, organizing the shop so I can get some machines in there. Get that sawmill in there. You guys hear Mona? What you doing, Mona? She's always grunting. What you doing, Mona? <laughs> You don't know cows are pretty communal organisms, guys. They lick on each other and love on each other. But again, like I said, we're going to leave them till just before dark. Probably, I don't know what time it is right now, but probably about 5.15. I'm going to come up here and move them again. So now, we'll turn the camera around. We're going to walk them back down. And we'll do a little conversation. Any questions, comments, anything you guys have? Right now, we'll kind of lean on a gate and talk to a mate. If you guys don't know about lean on a gate and talk to a mate, uh, a friend of mine named Wiggy started this program, uh, farming and ranching and fence building and, and this lifestyle. Uh, people suffer from a lot of depression because they're not, they're not making the money that they used to make. Times are tough. Uh, you take a guy that's been working on the family farm or family ranch for for 40 years and you take him and tell him he's got to go get a, a job in town it's quite depressing or you, you know like i said farms aren't making money like they used to the small family farm has gone by the wayside being uh um replaced with the big corporate farm and it's it's all about cheap food so if you want farms to survive hit that farmer's market know your local farmer for sure Stan says, been following you for a while. I commend you. Thank you, buddy. What was the best thing you saw at the show? <sighs> there were so many people there. There was just so many people. I'm going to say, at any given day, there were 300,000 people in that building. It, there was, I couldn't see much of anything. Uh, limb saw, I was pretty impressed with limb saw, and we're actually going to get a limb saw on the farm to test out. I think it's limbsaw.com. Uh, you can check that out if you want to. Um, Bill Gates is buying up all the farmland. Bill Gates don't matter to me no more than the rock that's laying over there in the pasture. In fact, the rock means more to me than Bill Gates. I don't care what Bill Gates does, and you shouldn't either. Why does it matter? What does it matter? If they want us, they want us to eat bugs, what does it matter if you don't do it? Don't let this stuff cloud your mind, man. This is all a facade. It's all a bunch of bull. Who cares what Bill Gates does? I don't care. He don't mean anything to me. He doesn't mean anything to me. So when you, when you think that people have power over you, that's when they have power over you. When you think China has power over you, that's when China has power over you. China's buying up all the farms. I call bull crap, dude. I call bull crap. When you think that someone has power over you, then they do. But when you don't let that affect you, then they don't, right? I don't know. Tell me what you think. I think it's gonna turn around for local farmers. People are waking up, says Short Bus Mooner. I would say that there's a movement back to the land. I would say there's a movement back to, to good quality food, but I would say that our average uh, person 
doesn't understand what a GMO is. They don't understand what selective breeding means. They don't understand how farms work. They don't understand how food works. They don't understand uh, that chickens make chicken. Uh, you know, the, the average person doesn't. Bill Gates owns 8,700 down the road from you. What, what has that done? Bill Gates is diversifying his portfolio. That's what Bill Gates is doing. I don't think Bill Gates wants us to eat bugs. And I don't care what Bill Gates wants us to do because he's temporary. You know, I'm temporary. You're temporary. We're all temporary. So uh, it, it, he doesn't matter to me. If I could sit down and talk to him and ask him why he's buying land, he'd probably tell you the exact same thing I'm telling you. He's diversifying his portfolio. I don't think he's trying to control us. I think he's the, the dude has more money than, than he knows what to do with. So what are you going to do at that point? What do you do? So... Elon is a Martian, says Ziggy. Now, I don't know about that. Um, I think he might be Batman. <laughs> uh, China owns a huge hog farm, growers in the USA. Don't buy the pork at the grocery store and you ain't got to worry about it. Find a local farm, man. That's what I'm saying. Find a local farm. Who cares if China buys the hog farms up? Be smart and go buy food. You vote with your dollars, man. You vote with your dollars, your food dollars. Vote with those food dollars. Don't buy the garbage. Don't buy it because it's cheap. How many of, of us could never ever, could, could survive without ever ever buying another pack of Triscuits or another uh, saltine cracker or another loaf of bread? You know what I mean? Buy local. Buy local. That's it. Ask him for money. And put it your farm, LOL, says Edwin. Um, I don't care about Bill Gates, brother. I just don't care. I just that he doesn't influence me. He's not poisoning people. And it <laughs> turn off the news, man. Make yourself happy. Turn off the news and make yourself happy. Please. Please, please, please. We can't live like this, guys. Look around. Look around. The sky is not falling. Is the sky falling? No answer. <laughs> oh, man. Look around, guys. Find a way to be happy. We can't live in constant turmoil thinking that the sky is falling. The chicken little world is not the world that I live in, and it won't ever be the world that I live in. I have been messed with a little bit. You know, you guys have seen the videos. I've been messed with a little bit about that shop building. It'll all work itself out. It always does. Everything always does. It always works itself out. So... Dave says, saw your clip about the septic. Make a decision on it. Not yet. Not yet, but it's too wet right now to get in there and dig and do anything. So, yeah. You don't see the trails over you. I don't believe in chemtrails. I'm a U.S. Air Force veteran, and I think it's completely foolish. Okay? That is not a chemical. That is condensed air. That is water vapor condensing on the wings of an airplane, on the moving parts of an airplane. I've seen an F-16 take off from the, from the runway straight up in the air and seen that right off the wingtip. I've seen it. I don't believe in it. I don't subscribe to it. And I think it's completely ridiculous. That's it. I do. I'm a reasonable man. I'm a reasonable person. I don't think that I'm being sprayed. That's unreasonable. And if you don't, if you think it's unreasonable, let me know. Send me qualified, quantified, peer-reviewed information and change my mind, please. I beg of you. But if it's speculation that you're using to, to, to figure out that condensed water vapor in the sky is falling on us and, and, and harming us, tell me why you think that. Give me some peer-reviewed Real information, not fake information, not propaganda. Give me some real information. I, give me some real information. I think it's totally unreasonable, Denise. We're going to disagree on that. I've seen it, okay? You've been on an airplane. You've seen it's just water vapor. It's not, they're not spraying. I have friends that work for Boeing. It's, they're not spraying. Why would anyone spray you? Why would anybody spray you? <laughs> Yeah, why? Tell me. I can buy grass-fed finished beef cheaper than my Safeway, says Steve. There you go. Know your local farmer. I mean, we're getting more people in here now that we're talking about chemtrails and flat earth and all that stuff. <laughs> um, I just, I, I seriously, honestly, if you believe in it, 
believe in it, but don't believe in it because it's it's not a faith-based setup, okay? It's not faith-based. It needs to be scientifically based. So if you can find proof, real proof, not propaganda, real peer-reviewed proof, please post it in a comment right there. I will look it up. I will research it. I will study it. And if it's true and real, I will eat my words. I promise you that. Totally promise you that. So... Absolutely. I can't live in a world where I think that the sky that is being sprayed by airplanes. And what's it doing? What's it doing? Because it ain't affecting me and it ain't affecting the cows. If you don't eat right, you're going to get sick. Right, guys? Woo! Woo! Not very responsive. <laughs> If you don't eat right, you're going to get sick. Stop eating garbage. This isn't killing you. What's in the grocery store is what's killing you. Okay? That's what's killing you. <laughs> the earth is flat, said canine striker, question <laughs> mark. Short bus mooner says, I just gave it to you. Yeah, it didn't come through, but it'll be in my held for reviews. Whenever anybody sends a link over, it gets held for review. So I'll take a look at it. Uh, I, I need multiple sources here. I don't need just one source, and it better be a peer-reviewed journal. Peer-reviewed journal, something from Lexis. Nexus, something that is scientifically proven and that is a peer-reviewed journal, not somebody that just wrote some stuff down and plopped it out on the internet, man. So Derek says, I think they're spraying chemicals. The proof is in the fact that we are idiots who are probably the ones the chemicals were sprayed on to believe that. That's a circle, man. That's a full circle right there. Talk to Doug from Doug and Stacy about chemtrails. Yeah, I'll talk to Doug about it. Um, yeah, I'll talk to Doug about chemtrails, okay? Guys, don't be fooled by this crap. Don't be. Doug and Stacy are awesome people. I'll say that. I, I love them to death, uh, but... Don't believe, this is not peer reviewed, okay? It's not. And what I say about the cows, what I do out here, you've got to take it with a grain of salt. You have to learn what you want to learn. You put all the information together and you learn the way you want to learn. But everybody's not the guru on everything. I'm not the guru on everything. But And <laughs> I just don't believe that something is falling from the sky that's trying to kill me. I just don't believe it. And I can't walk around and live my life like that. Plus, how much... How many people are outside working? I'm outside nearly all day, every day. 99.9% .9 of people are only outside from the front door to the car door, from the car door to the grocery store door, from the grocery store door back to the car door, from the car door front to work and back in. That's it. They might go for a walk in the neighborhood. So they're outside for 40 minutes per day. I'm outside. 8 to 12 to 16 hours per day. 8 to 16 to 12 hours per day. I'm outside. I don't know, man. <laughs> People need to get off their phones and grow some food, says Steve. That's it. Um, that's it. I, I know Doug and Stacy again. You guys are talking about Doug and Stacy, and, and Doug's getting, you know, I, Doug and Stacy are, are great people. Again, I sing their praises. I uh, had lunch with them not too long ago. I guess it was, gosh, it was about two years ago. Hung out with them, been to their place. Um, but I, I just honestly don't. I, the rational human being inside me with a scientific mind does not wrap his head around chemtrails and think that, the, that airplanes are spraying chemicals on us. I just don't believe it. So that's it. That's my rant about that. We can move along. <laughs> we can move right along. There's one common denominator here. This is says Philip. There's one common denominator that people bind to these conspiracy theories. That's the common denominator. And that's why they have nothing much of value going on in their life. I don't know. It's not crop dusting. You, you see what's up in the sky. Do you realize how minuscule that is? How small that is? How, it would, how on earth would it have an effect? I'd be more worried about the content, how much uh, bug spray and how much... Uh, uh, how many chemicals are in your food? I'd be more worried about that because you're actually ingesting this material. You're eating this material. How much bug spray and how, how much herbicide are we eating 
per capita. So I know Dave. Yep. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I think these girls want to move guys. What do you think? Should we move the cows? Shouldn't we move them? You guys want to move? I feel like we should move them. Yep. I think we're going to do that. You kids ready? You guys want to move? I think dad's going to move you. <laughs> Why not? Uh, they'll be rotated back up into that pasture soon enough and they'll be able to gobble up that little bit of hay that was left over. So let's just turn the camera around and show you guys the cattle move. That's what we plan to do anyway. Right, kids? Right, buddy. Right, little buddy. That's my friend. Ah. It's always the nicest ones that are the steers. And you guys know what happens with a steer, I assume. We're going to go ahead and take this little thing loose here toss that over to the side and let's move these cows all right guys everyone behave and don't let daddy get shocked by the electric fence okie dokie come on babies come on come on Woo! <laughs> all right count them as they go through guys there's one you count Keep counting. Hard to count them, ain't it? Keep counting. Humpy, humpy, run. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. Woo! Come on. Oh, there's a little hump and run, too. Yeah, Ziggy. Glyphosate is herbicide, brother. We don't use it here. We don't want it in our food. I don't want it in my food. There you go, kids. There's a little walking fertilizer machine. <laughs> it's hard to count them, isn't it? All right, there's Tammy. We got more coming, guys. Come on. The babies will go under the fence. I want to train them to the fence, actually. So, actually, I want this baby to get get a little tickle from the fence that way they don't push through okay so we got donnie normally brings up the rear he kind of pushes the rear and number 10 is susie she's always late too come on kids come on come on susie glyphosate is brand name Roundup. It's a systemic herbicide being found now to be a carcinogen, says F. Huber. Yep, got some stragglers, that's for sure. There's Susie. Got a baby coming through. Come on, Donnie. You guys don't know why Donnie is called Donnie. It's because he's got a Donald Trump hairpiece right on top of his head. Ivan Sharp says 53, Stan says 54, somebody says 43 and seven stragglers. The actual number, and I don't know, look at, look at Donnie. Come on, Donnie. Come on, bud. Come on down here. Yep. Come on down this way. <laughs> uh, it should be 51 cows total. Cannot believe after all the info People still use glyphosate. You know, I understand using uh, glyphosate on your driveway to kill the grass that might be taking over your driveway, um, or using a broadleaf on some fence uh, fence post uh, or fence areas. I understand that. We don't use it here on the farm. I, I don't understand uh, putting it on our food. I, I don't like that. That's just not me. We're going to have to push Donnie. You can see him getting a little bit sassy, a little aggressive here. Maybe he'll come on, but he's being a knucklehead, so it's time to move Donnie. Hey, Donnie. Come on, bro. Push your way on through there, bro. This is not what you want to be around a bull for. <laughs> you don't want to get in a pasture with a bull by himself. You noticed he turned toward me, right? Where's my, what's my escape plan? There it is. So if he does come after me, 
but she's never come after me. He's just a big guy. He's just a big guy and you want to make sure you're covering your bases. But if he did come after me, I'd know where to go. He knows where to go. He's just, there he goes. He's got testosterone. That's for sure. <laughs> Look at him. Good show, bud. Good show. The man of the house. Dave White says it kills honey locust trees. It kills anything. Glyphosate does. Yeah. It's a systemic herbicide. So if you have a weedy driveway, white vinegar kills weeds and it's not harmful. White vinegar, in my experience, does kill weeds. And I've got some uh, vinegar-based herbicide that we do use here on the farm. Okay. There we go. Hang that guy up. That's my own little design. And it looks like we've got an extra post here. So we'll take that post because the cows are going to come right back through here tomorrow morning. I'll uh, we'll hang that post right there. Tomorrow morning, I've got to set all these hay bales out. Brian says he's living the dream right now. Oh, Donnie, got all them girls. I don't know, Donnie. That's a lot of... <laughs> That's a lot of females to be managing, buddy. Stony Ridge Farm here, guys. Let's send her. There we go. I see a problem I gotta eliminate real quick. Let's hop the fence. This is my uh, catfish feeding barrel. And it doesn't have much feed in it, but it looks like the wind got up and has blown it almost into the pond. So I wonder if the catfish are out today. Should we find out? Let's just throw a little, little feed to the catfish. See if they still come. I, I tell you, I had an otter in here. It was uh, decimating the fish population. Fishy fishies! We'll see how that goes. My guess is they won't come up. I'll toss this right in there. Best barrels ever for storing feed and grain outside. Yep. Donnie is a lot of bull. Just be glad he doesn't have to pay child support. <laughs> Dave says Epsom salts mix with water. Gotta, gotta be aware. You know, I, I hear that glyphosate is a salt. It's considered a salt. But I guess any mineral is considered a salt. I don't know. Watching from Southern Illinois, you getting uh, getting any snow out there? Yeah, it's it's too early in the season right now for the uh, catfish to be up, in my humble opinion. And that stinking uh, otter, although I think an otter is a beautiful creature, it got me. They robbed it. T-post and strap the feed barrel. Oh, feed barrel is pretty heavy. Um, I typically put it right up here, so it's pretty heavy. It weighs about, I don't know, 18, 20 pounds, but the cows were in here not too long ago and they butted it and knocked it over and tried to get into it. Cows will tear up an anvil. So Western West Virginia says, Jonathan, we were driving through there yesterday, brother. Got into uh, quite a bit of bad weather. It wasn't too bad, but it was... It was blowing snow. Well, let's see if the cows have found the new hay bales over here. So some of them are going after any green grass that may have sprouted. We had a warm spell for a few days and we definitely got some green grass. We want to get the cows off of this section of pasture pretty soon here. Like I said, we've got to haul some cows to the market. So when it comes time to haul them to the market, we got to run them through our chute down there, back the truck and trailer up there. Uh, Denise says glyphosate is a sodium salt. So it must be sodium based, huh? And here's a good shot of little guys. That's right, two days difference. <laughs> two days difference. But boy, they like to play. That's called happy cows, guys. 
It's a wonderful place here. A very happy place. This is the newest little boy. Hey, little boy. <laughs> Pretty little calf, huh? I want to see your gravel job so I can tell you if you did a good job. If, your if I was holding your tongue right, <laughs> if I was holding my tongue right, I need to get over there with a rake. I've got to rake it all out. In fact, I might do that later on today. Ziggy says, Josh, sell me a truck. You can buy that Ford Raptor. Because it's going bye-bye. So I'm either going to sell it or I'm going to trade it in on a, a Toyota. I don't want a car payment though, so most likely just sell it. I did pick up a, a Toyota FJ Cruiser. I had one back in the day. Really like it. That, that's going to be the replacement for the Ford Raptor. I uh, really did enjoy the FJ Cruiser. Better fuel economy. Toyota, it's just so hard to, to go wrong with Toyota. Ziggy says, I don't want a car payment either. Yep. So the cows, like I said, this cow here is looking for any green grass that they can find. That's the sweetest, the best, has the most nutrient. Milo says, keep the crafter. I'm not keeping that thing, man. Not, I don't think I'm keeping that. Let's just say it that way. I hate to say anything set in stone because I always eat my words, right? Steve says, my 05 Tundra has 300,000 miles with no issues. Don't you still have that little Kleenex box on wheels, says Dave. Uh, I've got three Honda Elements. Love those little cars. They're a great little shop truck. I just like them. They're, they're great. Absolutely. Ziggy says, been wanting a truck for a long time. Dude, just go buy a nice used truck. I tell you, the best dog on the... Uh, bang for your buck nowadays in my humble opinion uh, and you guys share what you think but those uh those chevy silverados like from the early 2000s uh late late 90s i think 98 99 2000 with the 5.3 liter man those are great trucks the 6.0 is a bit of a gas hog but that's a great engine the uh the truck that we showed earlier in the video is the uh, uh the warlock dump truck and it's a 2001 uh, Chevy three-quarter ton with the 6.0 liter it has 200,000 miles on it and it runs like it has two miles on it so that's a great truck if I replaced with an American vehicle I'd be looking for a Cummins uh, like an older Cummins uh, something in the early 2000s uh, but not something new and modern with all this electronic gadgetry or just not looking for that so yeah, I think once new vehicle inventory goes up, prices will go down. Yeah, I wouldn't bank on prices going down for anything, including tractors, including trucks, including everything, guys. So not for a while. Fix the rust bucket. I have a 2005 point through with over 200,000 miles and runs great. Nice. Cool. Well, guys, this is going to be the live stream for today hope you enjoyed that we've been in here for right at an hour i like to I like to cut it at about an hour i do need to get the sawmill in the shop in the shed and that's part of tomorrow's projects uh, this is a wood stove that i bought from the fire department i'm using it as an incinerator to burn like shreddable documents and stuff like that that's getting moved to the other side of the farm all this equipment yard is getting picked up and moved out so that we have a nice beautiful place here to work so you are back to sending cows to the market says ryan ryan we have two we're overpopulated for the amount of grass that we have here on the farm now about this time i guess maybe even before this time a couple years back we took cows to the market i put a lot a tremendous amount of pressure on the farm in this winter i put a tremendous amount of pressure on my wallet we will 100 percent totally run out of hay if i don't take some to the market or spend another three to five thousand dollars would i rather take some to the market and pull out twenty thousand dollars and let them keep producing 
and keep enough uh, enough beef cows to, to process beef and sell beef off the farm? Or would I rather spend $5,000 to keep too many cows and put too much pressure on the land? What's the best move? What do you guys think is the best move? Sell off some, kind of recoup, uh, and start working on regenerating the soil, not overgrazing, or raise too many animals, overgraze, and, and have them eat me out of house and home when it comes to hay in the winter time. Remember, if I get rid of, if we have 51 cows or 51 animals right now, and I got rid of 25, we're gonna have an additional 21 animals on top of that. So we're gonna be right back where we were before. So I think it just makes, makes good sense. I can't, I don't have the market to sell all that beef right off the farm just yet. So I think that's the right move. I don't know. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it in the next live stream too. Guys, thank you all so much. Hit that like button on the way out. I'm going to come down here, let Buddy out. We're going to toss the ball a little bit and just enjoy this beautiful weather. What a beautiful day. The sky is not falling. The sky is not falling, guys. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. Hit that like button on your way out the door, guys. See you later.